What's up, everybody? We are live with the Bearded Rascal podcast with uh, Jatin Patel and I'm guest today, Amish Patel. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Yeah, everything's good. How are you? That's I've been you, busy be, for you. You bearded rascal, you bearded. What kind of rascally <laughs> rascal shit have you been up to this week? <laughs> Nothing. I was just out of town for a couple of days. So on right. a spiritual journey, I guess. So. Oh, you're spir- is that what you're calling your Hindu nationalism now? Eh? You call it a spiritual journey. That's <laughs> hey, great. Being spiritual doesn't mean That's that great. you're a nationalist. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> of course, of course, of course. Dude, I'm, I'm getting heavy into Hinduism again. You were saying this last time to me that like you grew up Hindu. Me too. Obviously, yeah. we both grew up Hindu. We're, co- we're first cousins, blood, yeah. blood related. Our dads are both brothers, and uh, like, for, like real brothers. Because in India, you got to be clear on that. In India, everyone's everyone's cousin and everyone's uncle. <laughs> but we're actual cousins. Our dads are actual brothers. Um, we grew up Hindu, and then at one point, like I, I'm hitting it now. I've I've had a couple of points in my life where this happened. You were saying this last time. Once you learned about Hinduism, you're like, wait a minute, I don't do any of this. I don't do any like. There's no strict stuff. It's very casual. No. No, but I guess, you know, that some things, some things we've been taught in our childhood was maybe because for our own good. I mean, that's how you learn discipline and everything in that sort of way. I, do, I wonder about that. It feels like the colonizer's tricks. It feels like, it feels like yeah. Catholic. It feels like people trying to make us into a Catholic, like easily controllable people. That's, that's kind of, that's, I know that's crazy. I know that's crazy. Yeah, but, but, I mean, but, but, yeah but the difference is that, you know, we have to wake up early go to temple and everything which is kind of scientific that it's good for health yeah yeah so well, maybe maybe the way of teaching was different it was not the way it's supposed to be yeah and i mean that it should be more open that why we are doing this instead of you just need to do this yeah i mean uh they don't they do that a lot with the authority figures i mean hinduism just became yeah. like a uh, authoritative religion and in China, they go through the same thing. They have Taoism and then they have Confucianism. And the Confucians are like, look, you got to be strict. You got to be on top of your shit. You got to be like, whatever. And then Taoism kind of teaches the opposite, which is like, you know, whatever you feel like doing is kind of natural. And that's what you should do. You shouldn't be striving for more. It's very yeah, it's like the, a similar thing, similar Hindu teaching. But, but in the end of the day, it's the government who decides what you do, what you don't do in China. In China, it is, it is the government. <laughs> It is the yeah. government. Um, yeah, so uh, let's 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 get right into it, dude. Last week they killed twenty. It, it, it was like a week, maybe. How long? How long has it been since they killed the twenty yeah, soldiers on the Indian um, side? It's been a week where they killed around twenty soldiers. So rude, and man. And in and it, in retaliation, it was like forty-three Chinese soldiers killed. Well, that's what the Indian government's saying. I mean, hey, yeah, I, I mean, I want to look. The Chinese, the Chinese are never going to disclose the real figures, right? You think but, so? Because when well, I, everybody knows so, because they they didn't they didn't even declare the real numbers for the COVID, did they? Yeah, you think so? I I I heard that they're actually cleaning that up because at the end of the day, like it seems to me, like like I I just heard, and this is again from like another podcast, but there's a great Canadian podcast called Alberta Advantage. They were basically saying that all of the COVID accusations that were making on China, that they screwed up or they tried to do it on purpose or like they're not telling the real numbers, all of that is just a way to waste all our times. And they almost want us saying that because what they're really doing is just taking, like they're colonizing India, they're, call, they're gonna take over South China Sea, they're gonna take over Japan. Like they're making aggressive, and, and the Uyghur Muslims, they're rounding them up and putting them in these camps. So at yeah. the end of the day, like all of, and, and this is this guy, this guy did like a bunch of research on it. I think he's going to write a book on it, but it was on the Alberta Advantage. Great, great Canadian podcast. And this guy's talking about how like all of the stuff that we're talking about with China, where we're like, oh, they screwed, they, they messed us up on purpose or whatever. Those are all like almost like conspiracy theories that are hiding mm-hmm. the real thing, which is that they're just going to take over the world now. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, everybody's right, everybody's wrong. But the thing is that when whole world has a, so rapidly, num- numbers are increasing so rapidly everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. But the place where it, where it originated, all the numbers are stuck where, it, you know, 80 to 86 or 90,000, something like that. They mm-hmm. are not gone up from there. So it's kind of hard to believe that, you know, that whole world, where you, don't, you, you didn't even have a cure for that. But dude, it, I think COVID, it, it, it shows the issues that we already had, which is that India versus China, okay? 
India is a democracy, technically. Yeah. And China is pretty authoritarian. They have one leader for the rest of their life. Like, it's never going to change. Yeah. And, no, it's not. Dude, it's easier to do shit, too. I mean, they could literally go and kill all the people with COVID. They sealed them into buildings. Yes. Like, just it's the things the that they're thing. able to do. It, it's the same thing they do with the Muslims over there. Yeah, nobody, they put them in nobody, internal camps. Yeah, nobody's asking anything to them. Nobody cares, dude. Nobody cares. Um, okay, but this is actually a good thing to bring up right now because two years ago, they okay. It's one thing that they that they just attack the Indian border. Okay, they, yeah. it's very rude. I think hey, South China Sea, Japan, India, the Uyghurs, they're out of control. Okay, <laughs> yeah. their attacks on India. It's one thing that they do the attacks, but then they make these goddamn videos. I don't know if you've seen this video, but I'm going to share a screen with you right now. Yeah, and, uh, I think you're going to be shocked, dude. Look at this. This is it. This is the. This is the. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can. Okay, so this is. If you look at the bottom, it says Xinhua is funded in whole or in part by the Chinese government. This is funded by the Chinese government. Okay, this is yeah. from two years ago though, when they were they had a border they had a border dispute in uh, I think in Sikkim, and this is their response. Yeah. This is this is the Chinese government's like this is their daily show. They did like a joke video about it. Oh shit. Oh shit. oh shit! Oh shit! 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 Well, hold on a second. Hold on. Technical yeah. difficulties right there. Um, because I have some <laughs> other audio playing. Damn it! Where's this other audio playing? Hold on. Let me stop that. <laughs> wow! What happened? I can't. I had my volume off, and I guess I'm just. There's just some other thing playing in the background. Okay, I'm just gonna close everything else. Cause what else could this be? Um. Oh, it must be here. Okay. Okay. Now that everyone saw my whole computer, but let's go back again. Let me try that again. Um, <laughs> screen share. No. Oh, fuck. Where is it? Here we go. No, that's not what I wanted to screen share. It's this one. Here we go. Wow, dude. Honestly, what's happening? Okay, here we go. Can you see that? Can you see her? Yeah. Yeah. I can okay. See her. So it says Xinhua is funded in whole or in part by the Chinese government. Yeah. Uh, this is like their disc video. Have you seen this? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I haven't seen this one. But you've seen stuff like this? Yeah, yeah a little. I don't, I don't watch more stuff like that. But I mean, look, at the end of the day. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, sometimes I end up seeing some things here and there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, it's called Seven Sins of India from New China TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. Funded by the Chinese government. Um, this guy is basically dressed up like a Punjabi dude. Yeah, they yeah. They I put think a turban a on him and a beard, and yeah. he's basically their joke, like the joke or what? I, it's not a joke. Like it's just like they, they. This is uh, from a border dispute from a couple of years ago. But just to be clear, like I don't know if um, people know much about the politics over there, so I'm just going to share one more thing. Because, because check this out. This is a map. Like that video, they put that out after they attacked, like you know, similar to last week where they basically just attacked like a like an Indian army thing. And then mm -hmm. they put out these videos saying like, hey, what are you guys stupid? Like, why are you at the border or whatever? So the border they were talking about, though, like the entire border is all border. I don't know if you can you see the map right there. Yeah, I can. It's basically they're arguing about a border that is the border between India and Tibet. So they took over Tibet in 1951. And now yeah. they're saying like, what are you guys stupid? Like, this is our territory. And yeah, just so the thing is that the one on the top near the mm -hmm. Kashmir, that one's actually... I think they won in, in, in 1962 this, war. This they took over in 1962. Yeah. They Even did. last week, they killed 20 people and they're, they're meant, they're, they put out official government funded videos saying, we killed them, sure, but why were you guys building roads there? Why are you friends with the Americans? Like the CGTN. Yeah, it's like, it's like we're building roads on our side of LSC, which is kind of creating a problem for them because... If you see military, if you see it on the, on the, you know, view from the military point, it's like we can, we'll be able to move troops too quick in that area after the roads are built. Yeah. I mean, the other so thing that's, too. That's kind of worrying for them. Yeah. There's, so there's that issue. The other thing that they're worried about is that over here, 
Like with Tibet, they've basically taken over India's water supply. Now another big yeah. water supply comes at the end of this, like up here. I don't know if you can see where my, my cursor. The, the yeah, yeah, I can is. see it. So there's another big water supply here, and this road is going to help them get to that, which is a water supply for them. And now pa on the Pakistan side, because this is over, this is all happening in Jammu and Kashmir. On yeah. the Pakistani side, Pakistan has given them a big chunk of land right here too. So yeah, India is fighting. Yeah. And uh, we kind of made it illegal, I think, in 2017, I guess, to show this map, the one you are showing right now. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Not for the discussion. But yeah. If you, are, if you are projecting India as something on a national level, international level, if you show this kind of map, it's illegal. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're, like, look at what they're putting here. It says Chinese maps label this area as South Tibet. So... Yeah, they, Arunachal Pradesh, did they take that over or did, is that no, still with India? No, still they, with us. It's still with India, but they're basically saying yeah. like that's ours. Yeah, that's the, dis that, that's the dispute going on uh, since I think uh, 2016, where the altercation going on between the, both the armies. On now wow. and then they fight with the fist fights and everything. Dude, I can't believe they killed 20 people just hitting them and just pushing them yeah. off cliffs and stuff. No, I just um, I just read from the Bihar regiment team that were deployed over there, and they were saying that the guy from the Sikh regiment were deployed after two days after the Bihar regiment had the fight. Uh, there was this guy who single-handedly killed like eleven army uh, Chinese army soldiers. Eleven. Wow. What a waste and, of time I mean, look, to fight. Look, Seeing kung fu movies doesn't mean that the army is gonna know the martial arts and everything. <laughs> if you see physical builds of the Chinese and the Indians, it's quite. It has a huge difference, right? I mean, they end up being five five. That's it. Every right. Chinese soldiers are five five, and oh average Indian soldier is around six feet. Now, if you say, look, I'm not saying that. Let's let's just say that we didn't kill anybody, right? But if you see that practically, imagine a five feet five guy killing 20 Indian soldiers. All those 20 not retaliating back. Nobody's even hurt. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean, okay, so, so I saw one guy, he showed the whole map. Like he showed the map of like before and after the fight. Yeah. And basically, yeah. India, I, I, I don't think like, like Indian, the Indian side wasn't aggressing on them. They were building a road to this water supply from what I could tell. Mm -hmm. And then what they did, the Chinese government, is that at, in the middle of the night, they just came, they just ran in on them. Um, yeah. It was like dark, like they were fighting in pitch black with rocks and sticks and whatever. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure that like once you start hitting, like these guys started hitting the other side back. But now if you look at that, he, the, this guy was showing like before the fight, it was just, mm -hmm. you know, like small buildup of like Indian people trying to, uh, the Indian side trying to build the road. But again, yeah. this is all like... Just to be clear with you, I mean, look, this is all inside of land that they took over in 1962. Yeah. So the idea yeah. that they're even making any kind of claims, bullshit. So they're claiming that, but then also the Indian side, like there's people building road, whatever. Once they did the, killed the 20 people, dude, now they are there. Like we're talking about, there's six tents. There's like, you know, five, I don't wanna say hundreds, like I don't wanna say thousands, but like hundreds of soldiers. Yeah, they it's, just, it's, uh, I think they just deployed Sikh regiment over there. Yeah. So oh, one no. of the aggressive, one of the most aggressive regiment in the whole world. Sikhs are the, after Jewish, that's what my dad told me. I, I don't know about the uh, facts right now, but my dad told me that in Air Force it's saying that, you know, the world's most aggressive race is Jewish. Like you're talking about militarily. Like you're, you're yeah, talking about military. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I mean, I've and heard stuff like that, like that they win, they yeah. win. And when you say aggressive, I think you mean like they're, um, like they're on top of their shit. Like the Mossad and the, and the, Jew, and the yeah. Israeli army is very, they don't, like, they don't back down. I mean, if, yeah. even if, even if I have the odds against them, yeah, they don't run away. And, and the same thing is with the Sikh regiment. The Sikhs are second most aggressive race on the planet. Right. I so, mean, they have a long tradition of fighting. Like they've been, yeah, yeah, the British. And, it's it's in, you know you. It's part of the religion you, a little you, bit. I, I, what I think is that you know, after a few generations, some things are 
inbuilt in your DNA. You cannot yeah. change it. Well, you're raising them from day one to be like, you're a warrior. You're going to defend this land. You're yeah. going to be proud and like happy to do that. So yeah, man. I mean, it's that's that's what they do. And and like, so in 1962, we talked about like China took over this piece of territory up here. I think in 1971 or or like like I don't know five six, five six years later, there was another fight and the Sikh. It was a Sikh soldier. I think it was mm. a Sikh soldier who basically like the Indian government even said, "Hey, like come back now, stop fighting them," and he, yeah. he refused to stop fighting. Like he kept going and he took over and i think that sikkim like i don't know the exact facts on this but there was and they called yeah, it was like, in sikkim i think it was in sikkim and like he basically took over an extra bit and he said hey we have to show some kind of force here or we're just gonna get yeah. keep getting encroached on i mean look 1951 they took over tibet look how huge tibet is god damn it it's huge yeah man. but but the thing is most of the tibet were buddhist i mean not most all of the tibet were buddhist they were not gonna fight back. They didn't have. They didn't even have the army to fight back. Yeah, that's bullshit, man. So it was it was easy for anybody to take over the Tibet. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to just let them be their own thing, man. Yeah, but, but nobody they're... nobody objected. I mean, the whole world kept silent about that. Yeah, and 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 they took they took the guy who was supposed to be the Dalai Lama, and now they're saying that he's gonna be reincarnated in India. Uh, Sorry, in China. In yeah. China. So they they yeah. made a legal system of of finding their own reincarnation of the Dalai Lama. They took the <laughs> dude. What are they doing with this kid? This is they, these guys are getting away with so much shit. And like, what? Nobody gives. Nobody cares in the world, right? Yeah, I mean, just yesterday I saw uh, I saw on Twitter that Biden is upset with what's happening with the uh, Muslims in Kashmir. Okay. How yeah. they are being oppressed and everything, and I was like, "What the fuck's going on with him?" It's you weird can to clearly see what's what's going on in China. You don't raise your eyes over there. Right. I mean, look. Okay, well, I'll say this. I'll say this though. On I'll say this for like. Okay, Biden's crazy, and we'll get into Biden in a second. Yeah. He is just like everything he says is nuts. But I will say this: he does kind of have a point in that. If you look at India against China right now. It seems yeah. like India's biggest weakness is that they're fighting with Pakistan. If India and Pakistan could become friends somehow, I don't think China really stands a chance. But, like but this, this. No, no, no. That, this argument is, I mean, it's been going on for ages now. I mean, from decades, okay, that mm -hmm. we have to be friends with them. We don't have any problem. We, we even give visas to the artists from Pakistan and everything, okay? We we had the IPL that's um, like the the domestic cricket tournaments, okay? Right. It's a huge money, where the Pakistani player used to come and play. Yeah. But then they don't stop sending the terrorists. Yeah, but is there proof that they're sending the terrorists? Yeah, there is. They're Maybe coming from the other side of the border. That's the biggest proof. Every day, on an average, okay, right now, every day, on an average, three terrorists are killed in Kashmir while crossing the borders. On average, three terrorists. Yeah, I mean, I guess I got to look into that more. I mean, the terrorists get dicey. Look, the You're calling world, them terrorists, the world, but who, what makes them a terrorist? Like, what's the... Like, are they being... Are they in a military occupation and they're fighting for their freedom? No, no. no. So the, the Indian in the side is not... Like what, what, what? Okay, because because last year India basically said uh, Modi said that he's going to start selling the land on on India's side of Kashmir, right? Now, yeah, he's selling not, the land. Not, China not kills twenty people the at the land. border. That property value, shit. Like, what's that property value now? It's useless, dude. I, I, you, would you buy land? It's twenty people died on the border, dude. This is India. <laughs> yeah, people will buy. It. <laughs> people will buy it. Just it's like, give them it's like dude, this is India. Just, people love real estate. <laughs> just That's give them two months. They're going to forget everything about what's going on right now. And they'll go there, buy stuff. They'll start doing their business over there. And look how that, you know, the, the demography of the Kashmir is going to change. And it's it, good, it yeah. needs to be changed because, you know, 300,000 Kashmiri pundits were exiled, killed, butchered, whatever you say. Okay. On the Pakistan the side. Women were, no, 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 on the Indian side, not Pakistan side. So who did that? The Muslims did it. 
So the, you don't know. It, you don't know about the exiles of Kashmir Pandit, do you? No, no. We got. I got. I got to figure. I, I mean, it, on the outside, to me, it looks like India is occupying it. But I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know. It, it, it's. It like. It. I think it was in. I think it was in nineties. I guess. Early nineties. Early nineties. That. Yeah. That. Uh, there was this, uh, I think they had the circular or something in the mosque and everywhere that they put it on the loudspeakers and everything that every non-Muslim living in Kashmir Valley needs to leave. Yep. If they are not leave, and, and not just leave, leave their women and daughters behind. What? Dude. Yeah, that would, dude, there's a documentary from a lot of news. Okay. Not just right wing, left wing, everybody. What's the situation called? What's that situation? Just type the exodus of Kashmir pundits. Uh, Kashmir, I'm going to put Kashmir pundits. Kashmir pundits share personal experience of brutality in Kashmir before their exodus. 16 minutes. Um, the ones who never left. Tales of Kashmiri pundits who chose to live in the valley. So at one point, like the Muslim people there started killing them. Nazi started killing them. They were butchering them, bro. Butchering in the nineties? Yeah, in the nineties. I'm talking about not oh nobody in the world bad an eye about it. No, nobody right really now, cares. And I gotta say, right all of now, the international right stuff. Right now, Kashmiri pundits are refugee in their own country. Yeah, and, and like I'm, I was trying to find because it does. I, I I'm trying to be like diplomatic here because it does yeah. look like India might be just taking it over or whatever, or like just occupying a piece of land because they need the water supply. Like they, they're a big part of India's water supply is coming from there. So maybe no, it's, they just it's took not, it. Look, you have to go, you have to look at the history for that. It's not just about the water. We didn't, we didn't went there first. When India got independence, Kashmir was, Jammu and Kashmir was a free state. It was not part of India. And it was not part of Pakistan either. But then they invaded the country at night. That's the state of Jammu and Kashmir. That's right. when the king, king of Jammu and Kashmir came to India saying that I'm ready to merge with India. Just help me save my people. Right. And that's, that's, that was a time when Indian military went there and fought back. Yeah, so no, India I mean, never went there first. Yeah, no, no. And, and, and like all the documentaries I watch about it, they make it seem like pretty like, I mean, if anything, I'm getting like an even view on it. Like I'm not getting like in Kashmir, India's being yeah. worse or and, Pakistan. And I'm getting like a resolution. Look, there was a resolution in UN. Yeah. For the demilitarization of the armies, both sides. Okay. On the Pakistan occupied Kashmir and Indian, both sides. Yeah. But the first law, for, I mean, the first rule for that resolution was that Pakistan needs to demilitarize whole area, take back the whole army back to Pakistan from the POK, which they never did. Right. That was the first, first rule for that, that when they do that, then India will go back leaving some troops behind for the security purpose. Majority of the troops will go back. But the first thing they need to do is they call their troops back, which they don't do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I got I, I, yeah, I to gotta check out that documentary because I did see a bunch of documentaries and nobody is like saying that India is the bad guy. Like I'm, I, I saw a German documentary. I saw like other documentaries. And I assume that everyone would just say India is a bad guy. But everyone just kind of said, like, this is a complicated situation. Both sides have issues. Yeah, because and, we uh, have history. We have facts about it that we never went there in first place. We just right. went there to share. Uh, it was like the king came here. He, he, he told the prime minister that, you know, help us save the Jammu and Kashmir from the, the barbarians right. coming and attacking us right now. And that's when the Indian, Indian army went there. So, yeah, it was it was never us there in the first place fighting fighting them. Yeah, it's just so sad that the two countries. I mean, they would just be better off together. Dude, and I don't know what the road is to bring in making that. You need happen. to you need to look another documentary that's called Tell me. Direct Action Day. Direct Action Today. Not Action Day. Direct Action Day. Yeah, 1947. 1947, yeah. Wow, this that looks is, so good. Yeah, because, you know, you have a lot of confusion about why we are not being friends with Pakistan. Yeah. This will give you a whole idea of why we are not, because we tried, and history has 
books written on it that how many times we have tried it to be friends with them. And every single time they have backstepped us. Yeah, fuck. Okay, cool. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you're I there. Have, you're there. Have, I'm in Canada. Look, I, I don't have, know. I can't really tell you. I have no problem with Pakistani people, right? But somebody come in here, they don't care about who's Hindu, who's Muslim. I'm not, right now, I'm not saying they're targeting Hindus, okay? I'm saying they're targeting Indians. Right. The terrorists come in here, they blowing themselves up, killing right. people with guns. They're not seeing who's Hindu, who's Muslim. They're okay. just killing Indians. And even if, you, even if you look on YouTube about how the Indian Muslims are treated in Pakistan, they are not even considered Muslims over there. Oh, if they're Indian citizens. Yeah. Wow, okay. So it's, the same thing. it's the same thing like what's happening in Saudi. If you go from Southeast Asia, you're not considered Muslim over there. Wow, really, eh? I, I'm not kidding. I thought they were supposed to be. I thought it was supposed to be super inclusive, but I guess like there are people. You're just gonna find some people that are like, oh, you're not the real. Like you're not real, real. And, and no, no, no. This is not some people. Okay, majority of them have this kind of thinking. In Pakistan. In Pakistan. Yeah, I mean, anybody it's... coming, anybody coming here from there, it's it's like in. We're welcoming them with open arms. Okay, you're welcome here. You're part of us. And, and the basic example of that is that singer Adnan Samu. He was a Pakistani-born Canadian singer. Canadian singer. Yeah, he was Pakistani-born, but right. his father okay. is a Pakistani. He yeah. was given citizenship over here. Yeah. And it's just two years back. Yeah, all the artists. I feel like for a while, all the artists came from Pakistan. Yeah, they did. Now they went back. Nobody's calling them back here. What? Is Indian art yeah, after, suffering? No, not at all. Well, really? 1.3 billion people, and do you think that there's going to be a shortage of artists over here? <laughs> I know, but dude, <laughs> for a while, they were dominating. I feel like the Muslim people dominated Bollywood, and they I'll, dominated... I'll, I'll tell you why, because the Bollywood is mostly dominated by the... You heard about Daoud Ibrahim? And this is a... The, this guy, is like who a... Did, the, the guy who did 1992 blast, 1993 blast in Bombay. Right. Okay. So he was a terrorist. He's an Indian terrorist. No, no, he's not a terrorist. He's no. considered an underworld dawn. He's like a, he's a mafia guy. Yeah. I've heard of this guy as more of a mafia guy. So you're saying this yeah. mafia guy had a little bit, he had something in the 1993. No, there was direct links of him because There's his brother links. was involved. Yeah. His brother was hanged last year, last to last year, I guess. No, I think in 2012 or 2013. Yeah. Not last year. Sorry. My bad. Man, India is the Wild West. What a great place to make a story, you know? Like, I, I, it, it's complicated. You know, like, I, every time I look at it, you, we were talking about this before, never, too. We, we always yeah, wanted to have it. You can never it, like, run out of content over here. No, you can't run out of content. <laughs> it's so many people and so much history. And, like, we yeah. over here, we want to just give everyone these parallels to America. But it's a different yeah. story, you know? Like, it's a, it's a completely different story. And, like, it is hard to tell, man. I honestly, like, because here's the thing. You're saying that. You're saying that Pakistan is sponsoring terrorists. Like, Pakistan has been run by military dictators for a lot of their history. For like, what part of, yeah, what part of their history? Like, are they like half the time military dictatorship, or like maybe thirty percent? All the time. time. Come on, not Imran Khan. He's a sexy, are you serious? He's a sexy bay. He's a sexy play. He's a cricketer, dude. He's a cricket playboy. Yeah, he's a, he's a coke and sniffer guy, and he just does what the army tells him to do. Really? I'm nobody in Pakistan has guts to do what they want to do. Let me tell you that. Right. But some countries are like that, man. Just because the military is technically not running a country, a lot of times the military just has more power. Like, it happens. It happened. That's how World War I You know how you, you can just you, – you, I'll give you another thing to go on YouTube is that how elections are conducted in Pakistan. That's the funniest thing, man. Okay. <laughs> it's still – they still have those ballot papers where you put the stamp and then you put – fold the paper and put it in the box. Yeah. Imagine a ballot box election in in a country like that corrupted, run by the army. Yeah. What's India's like? India's I heard is pretty tight. We got it's... we got EVM. We we it's electronic machines. Like you just press the button one time and that's it, you're done. Dude, you you're laughing off. you're laughing at how Pakistan does it? I think that's how Canada does it. Canada we go and we get a but, physical but, paper. But and the difference but the difference about it is that Canada is not influenced by the military. Very little military influence here. They don't yeah. have much money. I mean, they're trying. They're trying. They're trying yeah, to get plus, more money and whatever. But. Plus, the education is almost to everybody. 
Yeah. People are not dumb. I mean, hey, look, I, I don't want to go at that. That's it. That how dumb they are. But like, who? Like you guys eat poutine. I mean, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Now you did something offensive. This is the most offensive I mean, thing you've ever said. And I'm not into poutine. Look, yeah, it's 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 just like. Hey, beef gravy, cheese curds, fries. Yeah, why not? That's fucking Look, disgusting. I think man. it's garbage, but I don't think <laughs> someone from India can talk shit about poutine. Dude, what's a chana samosa chaat? It's like all, it's the same thing. It's just deep fried potatoes. Bro, everyone so ends up at the same junk it, food. Okay. <laughs> okay, there's more spices. Yeah, yeah, the Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. We don't, we don't eat bland food, okay? We eat bland food when we are sick. We eat kitchenies when we are sick. It's without spices, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess I guess Indian poutine is like a chana samosa or something. And it is way yeah. better. Like a chana yeah, samosa it's way better. <laughs> is so good. I, th- I think it is. I'm not a big poutine guy. I didn't, get, I didn't do the poutines here. It's because it's beef plus gravy. You, you, plus, you're vegetarian, so I'm that's vegetarian, a weird so reason for you. Yeah, it is weird. It, it's beef gravy, too. I never got into it. I always thought poutine was weird for me. As a I Canadian, have, I, I'm not... I ate beef when I was in Australia. Right. I mean, at first it was just by mistake because when I went from here, I thought ordering cheeseburger is like having chicken burger because that's what you do in McDonald's over here. Yeah. So I just ordered cheeseburger and the guy gave me and I just started eating. And I was like, that shit's not chicken. It's something else. And yeah. it's quite tasty. <laughs> well, one time I went to a Taco Bell here and they gave me beef by yeah. mistake. And I ate it. I, I kind of like, find it's... it tasty, okay? I thought it was weird. My mom brainwashed me too much. I can't get into it. I was like, oh, it's beef? Eh, I don't like it. Like, I couldn't eat it. No, I I used to eat steak over there. Not one from the cow, though. Steak? Yeah, not from the cow. What kind of steak didn't you eat then? I used to eat from the ox and the bull. Ox steak. Yeah. They had, uh, what is that, a Hindu loophole? You think you could just eat an ox and now you're okay? You think you're okay? You're going to get I'm it. Not, you're going to get a reincarnation, no, no. brother. You're going to get a reincarnation. <laughs> Don't think that look, it's all solved I, with the... Look, there's no no denying of eating cow in anywhere in Hinduism, okay? Yeah. It's because we believe that it's a sacred thing. It's We give cow the same importance as we give to a mom because we drink from her. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you this funny fact about it. I don't know if people believe it or not, but the thing is that if you are, you know, if you grow up with a cow from from your childhood, no matter which part of the world you are, when you cry, the cow cries. It's like right. some kind of energy connected. Or I don't know what, she, what that shit is, but <laughs> you cry somewhere else, you're not near her, she cries. I mean, it sounds like an unprovable, like, thing that an Indian mom would say that, like, really, who's going to go do the uh, research on this? I mean, it, or is anyone well, going to check this? I, you know, my mom told me the other day that, these, you, that there's... You, but you still got to prove me wrong with that. <laughs> I got to prove you wrong that a cry doesn't... A cow's not going to cry if you start crying? Like, yeah. honestly, it's one of those things that people say and they're like, wow. I'll, I'll tell you, why, I'll, I'll tell you why, why, particularly ox and cows are so smart. And so connected with us that we don't have any idea about it. Do you know we had two ox? I mean, before we were born, yeah. you know, when your dad was here in India, they used yeah. to do farming. Yeah. We used to have two ox, and uh, when they used to be uh, loaded with the stuff on, you know, on the cart, they would just say that you need to go home, and they would slap on the back. Nobody would drive the cart, and then the ox would just go from the farm to home without anybody. Yeah. Okay. This is not as crazy. Dude, the food's at right. home. A lot of animals will find home. They're not going to yeah. cry. If you're okay. in Australia and you but, cry, but your cow's not crying that. in India. I, Look, I don't know. It's, a, it's, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I think my, my mom was telling me that um, there's a, there's a Swami Baba. Like, there's some that's, what I, that's, that's why I told you that's a fun fact, okay? <laughs> it is a fun fact that, like, <laughs> dude, it's one of those things that who's going to really, like, what kind of a monster would go do research on that? Yeah, yeah but, take but, a monster. Uh, but, it's, but, like, it's like the but, same guy that's like, hey, but, do all dogs go to heaven? And some guy's like, no, no I proved it that they but don't the go to heaven. One fact, hey, but let the people one fact I'll tell you with the videos about it is that if you are, if you, if a cow, if you're raised near a cow, yeah. If you grow up near a cow, okay. somebody tries to beat you, she's near somewhere. Yeah. Even if she's tied up, all hell will break loose and she'll come running to you. She, she's, she'll definitely save you from the beatings. 
Of course. And that's that have videos for that. You can own a slave and they'll do that for you too, because slaves love their nah, masters. Come on, man. You just have to put slaves and cast in everything you do. <laughs> hey, man. I mean, what do you want? Look, like, that's, that's I'm not thing. saying, look, the, the thing about Hinduism is okay, there, there are good points and bad points in every religion, okay? Yeah. But you are stuck to one point only. That's about the caste system. Uh, caste system, and then this, this, this animal thing now, this is another negative. Animal. Point. This animal, animal thing, thing this animal thing of like the Hindu is a mom, the, the, the cow is a mom, so we can take as much milk as we want. That's, come on, guys. That's not a real No, thing. I'm not saying. The look, baby cow needs I, that milk. I told you last it. time also that we are against those people who kind of left, you kind of leave the cows out on the streets when they stop giving milk, okay? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people do that. I think, I think they are more accountable than those who kills them. Dude, we should kill but, them. Yeah, but the thing uh, non, is, the thing is, no, but the thing is, if I'm respecting what you believe, I'm not cutting, cutting pork in front of you. All I'm yeah. saying is I'm respecting what you believe. Yeah. What I'm, I'm expecting in return is you respect what I believe. Yeah. If I'm not cutting a pig in front of you because it's haram for you, it's not good for you, well, don't eat beef in front of me. Don't, don't butcher a cow in front of me. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we we are not imposing anything on you. We one point in one point three billion people, one billion are Hindus in India. Yeah. If we what do you really think that if we won, we we could not just kill everybody who's eating beef? Three hundred thousand. One Muslims, billion right? people. Yeah. There's only three hundred thousand. Fourteen. Fourteen percent are Muslims. Fourteen percent of India. Yeah. Isn't there more Muslims in India than Pakistan now? Well, bro, we are second largest Muslim. Uh, we are second largest Muslim population in the world. After who? Indonesia. Wow! And they don't even count. They don't even count them. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they count it when they're counting how many Muslims there are in the world. Yeah. But when they want to, no. But that happens even with Palestine, dude. Palestine, like, like the the Saudis won't help them. Like, no, no. one will. No one Nobody will let does. them in. And look, everybody tried to do it. Well, that's what the, everybody well, they fought got for. They fought a five-day six war, six-day war. Six-day war. Yeah, yeah, everybody got a defeat for them. Nobody questions Jews when they say that it was God who helped us defeating those people. But when we say that it's God who's yeah. who we're seeing in the cow and we don't want that to be killed, we are just called Islamophobe. Uh, you know, we stuck Look in that. a century-old mindset. That's why Jews that's love India. Good. Yeah, but you're going to see more criticism come out about Israel as we go forward. Because, like, right now, um, Vox, Vice, in the past, like, two, three years. Yeah. Like, I grew yeah. up, when I was growing up, it was like, you can't say anything about Palestine because Jews got offended here. But in Israel, they, they criticize it. Like, Jewish people in Israel criticize the government for, for taking the, for, like, for the policies, like, specific policies. There's always going to be two groups, okay? One who supports, one who don't. No, but over here, and I feel like outside of Israel, I feel like outside of Israel, there's a, it's until like the past two or three years, like until two or three years ago, it was like, everyone just pretended that like Israel and Palestine, like just let them do whatever they want. I guess in the last two or three years, there's all these documentaries coming out saying like, this is just a, it's a, you don't think it's, so you don't think that's a military occupation at all? Like the, 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 yeah. No, I think it's a, it's it's for Israel. I mean, I don't think they're doing anything wrong. That's what I think. Really? Are you into? Yeah, that? I totally. Yeah, I totally support. Israel see, this 100%. is the issue. You guys Look, are just supporting bro, each other. The you point. see no, the comment. No, no, no. Your base is hey, let's be friends no, no, no. and kill these Muslims together. <laughs> I'll not, tell you, eye just, for an eye no, no, no. leaves the world blind, it's brother. Not, it's That's not why about, China can come in. It's not about Muslims. It's okay. not about Muslims. Okay. People are wrong when they think that we are against Muslims. We are not. You have, you, have, you have to come out of the thinking that we are against Muslim. We are not. I have friends. Every day I sit at a place is, uh, in the evening, three hours. I'm at the same place for three hours. We drink tea, sit there, drink water and everything. That place is run by a Muslim. And I've been sitting there for the last 15 years. And 15, you give him years. your money? <laughs> because we are not against them. That's what I'm saying. We are not against them. Okay, so some shit is he? Does he have like a, a does he have a donation box to some group? No, like does nothing, he have does he nothing. donate any money to the? Nothing. nothing. He's okay. He's an Orthodox Muslim. Let me tell you. Yeah. 
Okay, he's an Orthodox Muslim, but we are not against him because I've actually met a lot of Muslim people everything. from India who are very pro India. Like that is yeah, a because the difference is I'm an Indian Hindu, right? Yeah, and they are Muslim Indian. That's the difference you have to understand. Yeah, yeah. Yo.